Back to Genesis. A series of programs for the entire family featuring many of the world's leading creationist speakers. They will answer your questions about creation and evolution and will demonstrate that the book of Genesis is reliable and vitally important. Well, I want to speak to, at this session on the long war against God, which, as perhaps you know, is the title of my most recent book, just published in December, and the second printing already out in February. It seems like the Lord is going to use that one in a unique way, too, and it's been getting some very good response. It was selected by the Evangelical Book Club as its December book of the month, I think, and at least a couple of three other book clubs have used it, so it looks like the Lord is using it, and I hope you'll get it and read it. It's the most thorough and best documented, I think, book dealing with the history and the influence of evolutionism over the ages and over the world that's uh, available. So uh, I want to just sort of outline that this morning. It's far too big a subject to cover in 45 minutes, but just to give you an idea of the, uh, of the scope and the impact of the creation-evolution conflict. You can perhaps guess from the title, The Long War Against God, that the theme of my talk as well as of the book is that there is a cosmic warfare going on we're all involved in it, one way or the other, between God and the devil, has been going on since the beginning. Every age, every nation has been involved, and we're involved on one side or the other, because after all, these are the only two worldviews. They incorporate everything, and either we can explain the origin and development of all things in terms of continuing natural processes, or we can't, one or the other. And so the one is evolution, one is creation. They embrace everything, and the a uh, world of, of sense and of knowledge and of understanding, and one must believe one or the other. You can't really believe both because uh, they're not synonyms, they're antonyms. Each is the opposite of the other. And there is a great cosmic conflict going on, and the basic uh, rationale and the foundation of that conflict is between these two great worldviews, God-centered or creature-centered, creator or, crea or, or creature, or creation versus evolution. And so this has been going on since the beginning in one way or another, and my thesis is that uh, the creationist worldview, or you might say the creationist tree, has borne good fruits. The evolutionist tree has borne, borne bad fruits. We can evaluate these two worldviews scientifically, and we do that, and we would say that all of the scientific evidence supports creation. Not a single real fact of science supports evolution. All the real evidence supports creation. But there's also another way that you can approach this conflict that the Lord Jesus himself gave us. He said, by their fruits you shall know them. A good tree cannot bring forth corrupt fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And so we can evaluate these two worldviews in terms not only of their scientific validity or invalidity, but also in terms of the fruits which they have produced. And I would maintain that the creationist tree has produced good fruits, it's produced sound doctrine, it's produced good systems, it's produced uh, good practices. The evolutionist tree, on the other hand, universally has produced bad doctrine, bad fruits, bad practices. That may sound kind of an extreme statement, but I believe it can be documented compellingly, and most people don't know this, even most Christian people are not aware of it, so that's why we want to emphasize it in the book and in this particular session. Now. <clears throat> in support of the idea that there is this basic conflict of evolution versus creation, the devil versus God, let me just remind you of a few verses of Scripture. For those who think that this is kind of a, an extreme position, the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, said himself in the 8th chapter of John that the devil is the father of liars. He is a liar. He is the father of it. He is the great deceiver. It says in the 12th chapter of Revelation, he is the one who has deceived the whole world. It says in uh, Revelation, or, or rather in the first Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 4, if our gospel is hid, it is hid to them who are lost, in whom the God of this age, that is the devil, has blinded the minds of them who don't believe, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. If people cannot see the gospel, it's because their minds have been blinded by the devil. He's the great deceiver. 
He appears sometimes as an angel of light and his ministers as ministers of righteousness, but he is basically a deceiver. And 1 John 5, 19 says the whole world lies in the wicked one. And if it is true that uh, evolution is the great lie, as Ken Ham's book uh, suggests in his title, and I think is certainly valid and can be demonstrated and documented, then, of course, the fundamental author of that lie must be Satan. Now, I want to just sort of establish generally what I said, that the fruit of the evolutionary tree is bad in terms of its whole scope, and the fruit of the creationist tree is good. In terms of, the, of creation, the good tree, let me just suggest a few things. The, d d are you aware of the fact that our nation was founded upon creationism? Our American nation, with all of its tradition of religious liberty and freedom and so forth. Uh, it's in the Declaration of Independence. We've been endowed with, by our Creator with certain unalienable rights and so on. And it's implicit in the Constitution, in the writings of the Founding Fathers. Uh, even men like Thomas Jefferson and Ben Franklin, who were probably not fundamental Bible-believing Christians, but they were, they were deists maybe, but at least they did believe in creation. Thomas Jefferson explicitly rejected the idea of evolution in his writings, which was known long before Darwin, of course. And uh, Ben Franklin also said that he believed in a creator who had created the world. So did George Washington. Even Tom Paine did. So the founding fathers of our nation were creationists, and it was founded upon creationist principles based on, uh, built around laws which were the laws of that creator. Uh, our initial schools taught creation, not only the church schools, but even the public schools when they first came into existence. But it wasn't long before the Unitarians like Horace Mann and other got control of the public school system and not uh, too long before John Dewey came along and established evolutionary humanism as the religion of our public school system, established the American Humanist Association with its humanist tenets and so forth, and since that time our nation, its schools, its courts, its media, just about our whole society has been uh, taken over by the evolutionary worldview. But the creationist worldview was our foundation, and the same thing is true with science. True science doesn't support evolution. The founding fathers of science were creationists. Many people think that science came out of the Renaissance, but it didn't do that. Greek philosophy was restored in the Renaissance, and that was evolutionist. But uh, science, true science, came out of the Reformation when people began to have access to the Bible and read and promulgate the Word of God. And then came along men like Johann Kepler and Isaac Newton and uh, Robert Boyle, the father of chemistry, and uh, Pascal, and Pasteur, and uh, Brewster, and all of the great founding fathers of science, almost without exception. There might have been a few exceptions, but by and large, the founding fathers of science were Bible-believing creationists. At least they professed to believe in, in uh, creation uh, and, in, and in Christianity. They, again, might have been some of them somewhat unorthodox in various ways, but they all believed in God as the creator. They believed in the Bible. They believed in Christ. And they said, like Isaac Newton and Kepler and men like Clark Maxwell, that they were simply thinking God's thoughts after him as they were doing their science. But now science also has been taken over by the evolutionary worldview, by and large. And now we have the idea being circulated by our scientific establishment, including our California educational establishment, that science is a proved fact and everything has to be taught in the light of evolutionism. Well, uh, True science, true Americanism, true Christianity were based on the foundation of creation. Ken Ham has been bringing out the, the latter concept, but let me just mention a couple of other points along that line. Sometimes we do hear people say, well, don't get involved in preaching creation, just preach the gospel. It's important to get people saved, not to make creations out of them. Well, in a sense, we would agree with that, and our purpose is to see people come to the Lord Jesus Christ, but you have to realize that Jesus Christ was creator before he became the Savior. And the reason we need a Savior is because we have rebelled against our Creator. Who is Jesus Christ? You know that Christ, surely you know that He is the Creator. By Him were all things created in heaven and in earth, whether they're visible or invisible, thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him, it says in Colossians 1.16. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Speaking again of Christ, He is our Creator. And you don't really preach Christ without preaching him as he is. We don't want to preach another Jesus who is not the true Jesus, as we see mentioned in Corinthians. We want to preach Christ as he is, and he was the creator and the savior and the coming king and lord. And that's the full scope of the doctrine of Christology, which is founded then upon Christ as creator. And the gospel, do you know that the last time and the climactic time the 